Good morning, colleagues. Um, today we are discussing the audit considerations relating to an entity using a service organization, which has been well expanded in our standard on auditing 402. As part of this uh, presentation, we will do a quick introduction of what the standard is all about, what is the process workflow that a user entity auditor has to follow as part of SA402. What are the types of reports that uh, the user entity auditor would need to review, rely upon as part of his auditing considerations under SA402? And what are his reporting requirements under SA402? Before we start, uh, let us first understand uh, uh, what are the responsibilities cast on the user entity auditor under this standard? It is the user entity's auditor, the user entity auditor's responsibility to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence when client uses a service organization. In a short while, we will try to explain who's a service in, so a service organization, who's a user entity, who's a service organization auditor, and who's a user entity auditor. As part of responsibilities under SA 315 and SA 330. It is the user entity's auditor's responsibility to obtain an understanding of the internal controls relevant to the audit at the user entity, sufficient to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement and in designing and performing further audit procedures which are responsive to those risks. These are well captured in the standard on auditing 315 and 330. Let us first start with who is a service organization. It is a third party uh, or its segment which provides certain services to a user entity. For example, uh, accounts payable process is at times in larger organizations or an accounts receivable process is outsourced to third parties. Such third parties which are processing transactions on behalf of a company are called service organizations. They are very, they could be relevant uh, to the user entity's internal controls over financial reporting. Who is the user entity? Entity that uses the service organization and whose financial statements are being audited is the user entity. The service uh, auditor, that is the service organization service auditor, he is a professional accountant in public practice. At the request of the service organization, he will be issuing reports on the controls existing at the service organization to the extent they are relevant to the user entity and provides assurance report on controls at SO as mentioned. As far as the user auditor is concerned, he is the auditor who audits and reports on the financial statements of the user. These definitions are very, very critical as we go along in the balance part of this time. The basic flow of the user entity's auditor's procedures would involve obtaining an understanding of the service organization in user entity operations. This would involve to understand what are the nature of services that the service organization is providing, what is the materiality of transactions that are being processed by the service organization. Second, he would be expected to evaluate the design and implementation of relevant internal controls at the user entity. This would involve uh, looking at the design and implementation of controls uh, as well as uh, those which have been applied at the service organization. For him to really uh, report on the internal controls over financial reporting operating at the user entity. He would then need to determine sufficiency of understanding to arrest, assess the risk of material state, misstatement. That is well cap captured in our SA315 and SA330 where, where the user entity auditor needs to determine whether or not he has a uh, sufficient understanding of the entity to gain an understanding of the risk of material misstatements that may impact the user entity. Uh, in the event he is unable to uh, determine the sufficiency of understanding uh, of the risk of material misstatement, he would need to perform alternative procedures. Uh, as we go along in this presentation, we will deal with 
uh, what could be the alternative procedures in such cases uh, he may use a type 1 or a type 2 report uh, as evidence uh, to gain evidence around uh, you know uh, the risk of material misstatement uh, to understand what are the classes of transactions that are processed at the service entity uh, we will deal with uh, you know what is the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 report uh, during the course of this presentation uh, responding to assess risks uh, basically once he has an understanding in terms of what are the risk or material misstatements he would need to devise his own procedures to address uh, you know respond to those assess risks as captured in the SA 330. Uh, the user entity auditor would have an expectation that the service organization's internal controls are operating effectively. Uh, using a type 2 report he can get evidence as to whether or not the user entities um, uh, you know internal controls uh, are operating effectively over the classes of transactions that are being processed by the service organization for the user. It would also be his responsibility to make inquiries uh, at the user entity in terms of their awareness, if any, of around fraud, laws and regulations, non compliance thereof, uncorrected misstatements at the service organization. And uh, all of this uh, leading up to reporting by the user entity. So each of these uh, phases of the entire uh, auditor procedure we shall expand in the following slides. Coming to the audit approach, uh, we will first need the user entity would need to, auditor would need to understand what is the nature of services that are provided by the service organization. What is the nature and materiality of transactions that are processed? All of this is part of the first box on this slide, which deals with our services provided by a service organization relevant to the audit of the user entity's financial statements. If yes, has, if he's been able to gain an understanding, then we come to the third box in this presentation that whether are we able to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement based on information available at the user. If the answer to any of these questions is no to the first box, okay, he would need to devour, uh, to, to adopt different procedures to gain an understanding of how the service organization is relevant to the user. So in the event um, he is able to uh, assess the risk of material misstatement based on information available at the user entity, uh, you know, basically he would need to document the key elements of understanding the procedures performed to obtain this understanding, evaluate the design and implementation of relevant controls including the user entity. In the event he is not able to uh, assess the risk of material misstatement, he would need to obtain that understanding as I mentioned earlier, uh, either through a type 1 report or through a type 2 report. We will expand on the difference between these two reports. Uh, later in this presentation. Uh, contract, contact the service organization. He himself goes into the service organization through uh, reference of the user entity and uh, contacts the service organization, uh, does his own procedures at the service organization to gain an understanding of how uh, to assess the risk of material mistake. Uh, visits the service organization as I mentioned or use another auditor to perform procedures at the service organization to, to gain evidence around what is the risk of material The next, uh, the second last uh, sort of box, are we able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence concerning the relevant financial statement assertions based on information available at the user entity? Yes, perform further substantive procedures. No, obtain that information from one of the following, whether it's a type 2 report, visit the service organization or use another auditor to perform procedures. So in a nutshell, uh, what this uh, audit approach is really trying to say, it is the user entity auditor's responsibility to ensure that he has gained a full understanding of the relevance of the service organization vis-a-vis -vis the service, um, user, uh, relevance of the service organization in, you know, in, in reference to the user entity. Um, if he is not able to get that uh, necessary uh, information or a comfort, 
uh, he would need to either visit the service organization get another auditor to visit the service organization or use a type 1 or a type 2 report to get that um, and and uh, you know post that uh, he would be in a position to opine on the user entities uh, financial state moving on to the next slide uh, we've been speaking about type 1 and type 2 reports uh, the first uh, is a type 1 report this is an assurance report uh, it is to gain an understanding of controls at the service organization affecting processing of uh, user entities transactions uh, points uh, in the he will need to understand the assurance report will highlight points in the transaction flow where material misstatements may occur uh, what are the control objectives and what is the design and implementation uh, around each of these uh, around the entire process which the service organization has uh, uh, formulated yeah. so the assurance report as i mentioned could be of two types uh, type 1 and type 2 uh, a type 1 presentation type 1 report it's a you know he has to ensure that there's a fair presentation of the description of the system itself this could include both manual and it systems in place uh, plus whether or not the design of controls is suitably designed so the controls are designed to prevent right uh, a material misstatement occurring uh, in relation to the transactions that are being processed by the service organization and it's important to note that uh, under a type 1 report you know the the report is at a specified date. it is only con you know providing assurance in relation to controls existing on a specified date as compared to a type 2 report type 2 report expands uh, you know the type 1 report actually uh, the fair it it gives a fair presentation of description uh, of the system which the service organization has uh, for to process the transactions of the user entity uh, whether or not the design of control is uh, suitable to prevent a material misstatement and most important a type 2 report comments upon the operating effectiveness of the controls tested and also uh, please note that this is for throughout the period rather as compared to a specified so as compared to a type 1 report a type 2 report provides the um, user entity auditor far more uh, substantive evidence in terms of the controls that are operating um, at the uh, service organization both from a design perspective and an operating effectiveness perspective 